All right, in this video, I want to show all the parts that I've got to play with for uh, for Bob's timer, and um, I want to get one of the microcontrollers uh, so I can program it. That's the the goal for this video. So um, here's all the different micro microcontrollers I'm playing with, and um, to make it Arduino compatible, uh, like this Arduino development board here, I'm going to be using a um, AT Mega 328. And rather than this big style, it's called a through hole part. I'm going to use a surface mount version of it. And this is so this is the same exact chip, it's just surface mount style. And I've got these little adapter boards. I got a few different styles of them over here. And this just allows you to put a surface mount part on to a breadboard so you can learn how to use it. So um, this is the microcontroller that's going to be going into the main unit of the kitchen timer or the mom's timer. And then this is the little guy that's gonna be going into the key fob part. And this is uh, uh, half the price of this one. So that's why I'm going that route, get a, get a more inexpensive one. I've also got a little, another one that I might try out. This is an eight pin one, this is 14 pins. And I know this will be enough pins, but I'm not sure if the eight pin one will be enough pins, so. That's a bunch of different little microcontrollers. And then, um, so I got a couple different buzzers. I'm gonna, this is the buzzer I had uh, in the first one. And then I got this one here. This one is, is a speaker actually, rather than a buzzer. But I'm gonna try it out, see if it's real loud. Um, I know the quality of the sound will be better, but I don't know if it'll be loud enough. So uh, I'll try that out. And then I got the display, and then the great rotary encoder like I used last time. It's got a built-in RGB LED, so you can do different colors. Really nice rotary encoder. And then I'm gonna have two LEDs on this part of the thing. So there'll be one little LED here, and that'll turn on when the battery inside the main unit is charging. And there'll be another little LED on the key fob part, and it'll turn on when it's charging, and then they'll go out when they're when they're charged. And um, so that's, these are the two batteries. And uh, so that's the, the LEDs. And then to drive the display, I'm gonna use a shift register like I did last time. And then this is a, a surface mount version of, of that shift register. So I've got a bunch of those. And then these are the wireless um, transceivers. So they can send and they can receive. They use 2.4 gigahertz and um, are very easy to program against so I'm gonna be using those and then I got all kinds of little surface mount resistors and capacitors that are gonna be needed for the circuitry and also got a fuse this is a 500 million fuse so this is um, gonna be used to protect the USB port so I, my circuit doesn't draw too much power and um, I think I think this doesn't ever burn out. Like it'll just stop the current flow if it's above 500 milliamps, but it doesn't burn out. So you can, does, it's, it'll self reset if you unplug it, plug it back in, it self resets actually. I think, we'll see. I haven't used this before. <laughs> uh, this is a battery charger. So I'm gonna have one of these that will be set up to charge the key fob battery, another one to charge up the, the bigger battery in the main unit. And then um, this is the, what the USB connectors look like. Got a little bag of them. And for the uh, serial communication, um, so that you can program the microcontroller uh, through the USB, I got a few different style USB um, to serial adapters. And this is a really popular one. Um, FTDI makes it, um, but it's expensive. It costs like four bucks. So I got one of, you know, got some of these, and then I went um, uh, the opposite route and got this really, really cheap one that's called a CH340G. It's only like 60 cents for, for this guy, but you can't get these um, in any US stores. You have to order them from overseas, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure about these, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And then FTDI, they make a cheaper version of this. Doesn't do as much. And I'm gonna give it a shot too. It's only, it's $2 for that one. And then um, these these little guys here are 
to protect the lithium polymer batteries from being discharged too far because it, it hurts them if you go below like 3 volts or 2.5 volts. So I bought a couple of these little boards that are meant for that and uh, to, just to see what the circuitry was on them. And um, here's the individual parts. I got, I got the individual parts so I could put that on my own circuit board. So I'm going to be playing around with that and see how that works. Here's the uh, little motor that's going to be in the key fob that'll do the, the vibrating. Um, this is going to be in the key fob. This is a read switch. This can detect when a magnet is present or not, and it'll open or close the circuit. And that's what, how I'm going to detect when the uh, key fob is on or, or off. And then um, this is how I'm going to get power over to the key fob. Um, these little connectors here. I'm going to try to use a magnet, the magnets that hold the key fob onto the back to do the power, but if uh, that doesn't work, then these are going to be the way that I do that. And then the two batteries. So um, now I'm going to start working on getting this thing so I can, um, I can talk to it and get a program on it. All right, I got all the hookups done, or almost done, for the, uh, for the microcontroller here. And I just remembered that I needed uh, to show one other part. Um, so it turns out these transceivers, you can't run them off the voltages that the LiPoly batteries are gonna produce. They produce up to 4.2 volts. And the VCC pin of this can only tolerate 3.6 volts. So I got a 3.3 um, volt regulator, surface mount ones. So I'll be, I'll be putting two of these into, uh, you know, one in the main unit, one in the key fob, uh, specifically to address this issue where these can't be run with three point, anything over 3.6 volts. And I, I actually, I'm thinking that maybe I can, per, I can just run the entire circuit with this regulator. Um, but if it draws too much power, then I will just make a modification to this so that um, only the, only this particular part is run with the voltage regulator and the rest of the circuit will just run with, on whatever voltage the LiPoly battery is outputting. It, it, it'll output between 4.2 volts and then it will go all the way down to I think about 2.5 volts before my, uh, my low voltage detection circuitry will kick in and, and cut off the power to the battery. So anyways, that's the last part. All right, so um, for the hookups here, what um, what you can do is on the uh, data sheet they show you know which pins go to ground. So like ground is on 21, and then there's a ground that's on three. And and um, you know I just hooked up little little black jumper wires to three, and then 21 is is over there. And so I was just going around doing that. But also the um, the Arduino, the regular Arduino website, they have a there's an Arduino that's called the Arduino Pro Mini, and it uses the exact same surface mount part, and so it's got the same same pins listed here. So ground is three, and then there's one on twenty-one. But it is also showing like where the crystal goes and how you have to hook it up to ground, and that you should put a capacitor on this analog reference pin um, for the way that you know the Arduino is set up. So I want to make my my mom's time Arduino compatible. So I'm just going to use this schematic to get me going. Um, you know, it's got the, the LED that's on uh, pin number 17 here. So I've got that exact same thing uh, hooked up to this LED. And then I got this, oh yeah, this resistor here is going to go to the uh, reset. There's a reset right there. And that's, uh, here's the 10K resistor going to VCC. So I'll just get this plugged in to uh, 29. So... Um, there we go. So that's resistor. That's the 10K pull up resistor on uh, 29. And then the uh, other hookups that I had to do was um, I need to to be able to put something onto this chip. I need a programmer, and you can buy programmers uh, specifically for that. I actually have a couple, but you can also turn an Arduino development board into a programmer. And I'm just going to head and do that. I did this for my first one and um, it was pretty pretty easy to do. So um, to turn this into a programmer, all you've got to do is run the run your Arduino IDE and then they have an example sketch that's just called Arduino uh, in circuit serial programmer. And so you can 
you can upload this program to your Arduino development board. It turns it into a programmer and they list out right at the top what programming pins are. So for the reset line, that's going to be your Arduino development board's number 10. And so I've got this orange line here plugged into uh, digital pin 10 and it's going over to the reset pin, which is pin 29 on my blank microcontroller here. So um, these are the four, four pins that I hooked up and they're, they should be all ready to go now. So uh, let me go ahead and plug this in. The battery on my computer's getting low now. So I will now upload the sketch to the development board. Make sure I pick the right stuff here. So the board is that and the serial board is that. So now I'll just upload that program to it and turn it into a programmer. I think this goes pretty quick. Okay, so it's all done. And now I can put the bootloader on this microcontroller. And I'm gonna put an Arduino Pro Mini bootloader on it. So to do that, you just go to board, Arduino Pro Mini, and I'll pick the 3.3 volt Arduino Pro Mini. It runs at eight megahertz. I got an eight megahertz crystal on there. And my programmer will be the Arduino as ISP. You pick that. And now, burn bootloader. And now it will use this programmer to program that and make put the bootloader on it. That's interesting. The, uh, I've got this pin hooked up to um, 17 here, which is then hooked up over there to digital pin 13, the, the serial clock pin. So they're they're all those two are hooked up together. So when this bootloader finishes, yeah. So um, so now we should have the bootloader on there. I'll uh, so theoretically I should be able to unplug this and hook up the pins here to the appropriate pins here and I should be able to program this directly with the uh, serial adapter rather than having to use a programmer. I'll try that now. All right, I've got the uh, serial adapter all hooked up to the right pins. Um, I'm hoping the right pins on our, hopefully our new Arduino Pro Mini. And let's see if we can uh, upload a sketch to it. Oh, um, you know, hook up the the serial adapter, which was what was nice, is on the um, the schematic. They actually did have an FTDI basic uh, breakout example, and so they showed that the ground needs to go to ground and uh, VCC, VCC, then um, TX0 goes to RX1, and then over here they list out what RX1 is, and that's pin number 30, and then you can see TX0, that's 31. And that goes over here to the TXO and the, oh, there, there it is here. And then it goes onto the breakout or the FTDI board as RX1 and then DTR, DTR. And, and that DTR just goes up through here. DTR goes to reset. So, um, so that's what I did. I just hooked these up and they labeled the, the pens here. So all hooked up and now let's see if we can do a blink sketch. And let's see examples, blink, and pen 13. And let's make the light blink real fast. <clears throat> Alright, so uploading. Oh, uh, it doesn't look like it is working. It's not working. All right. Not in sync. Hmm. What 
did I do wrong? So RX1, that's 30, that's right. There's only a few of these. Let's see, DTO, oh yeah, there's a, there's a capacitor. You need to put a capacitor in between DTR and N29. I didn't do that. Okay, so um, that's the N29, it's got that orange line on it. So let me get 0.1. Okay, so this capacitor here, let's see, if I unplug that, I should be able to reach this one to 29. One more over. There we go. And that will go here. Okay, let's see if that fixes it. Let's see. Okay, yeah, we're getting lights on here now, so that, that's good. Yeah, and it's blinking real fast. So, okay, that, that looks like it's good now. Let me change this to uh, 7. And I'll put it back at a slower blink. Upload that. So yeah, that, that's looking good. And number seven, Arduino seven, is number 11 right there. So we'll just take this and plug it into 11. And we got a slow blink. So that's great. So uh, now we have a Arduino Pro Mini, basically.